Today, we're going to look at how to measure the losses of heat of a room. To get a sense of which rooms lose a lot of energy versus those that don't lose quite as much. The approach we are taking is relatively simple. It needs a thermometer, an electric radiator, and some form of measurement tool for how much output we've had from the electric radiator. For this purpose, we are looking at a room that's in a shed, right? So it's outside, it's not really part of the house. And the question is whether, although we are still kind of in the winter, we're gonna be able to use it to get someone to sleep outside. We had the thermometer that was uh, in the house somewhere and it was showing anywhere between 17 and 15 degrees and then we're taking it to the shed and of course um, the temperature goes down very quickly and it measures now something like six degrees celsius so that's the temperature and then at 2 30 in the morning during the off-peak hours we're going to use the electric radiator we switch it on and we're going to measure how much energy we've used to get to the peak of temperature and then back down. Okay, so the question is how much energy is necessary to essentially pump up the temperature and then take it back to where it was before. All right, so the idea is that the energy we've injected over here is the energy that's necessary to keep this average temperature constant, okay? So the average temperature is gonna be something like 10, 11 degrees here, because if you look at the peak, on average, the temperature is going to be somewhere in the middle, okay? So the energy we've injected with the electric radiator has allowed to keep more or less these, this temperature for that amount of time. Right. So with that, what does that tell us? That tells us that this is the amount of energy that needs to be injected to compensate for the losses. If we had a perfectly insulated room, then whatever we're injecting in terms of energy or heat would have stayed in the room. But because this is far from perfect, this is why the temperature goes down. OK, so all we need to know is how much energy how many kilowatt hours were produced by the radiator at the time we were heating, okay? So let's take a look at that. First, what was the average temperature outside? The average temperature inside during the period of observation between 2.30 and the morning. How much energy was delivered by the radiator? Remembering that an electric radiator typically is 100% efficient. Everything goes into the production of heat, right? So we're very close to 100%, if not 100%. That's all it does. It's generating heat. How long did it take before the temperature went back to its starting point? The temperature difference is therefore 9.4 minus 5.5. So how many kilowatt hours for each degree of difference with the external temperature on average? Well, that's 2.63 divide 3.9. So that's 0 0.674 kilowatt hours. But now, very importantly, we want to know the loss in terms of an actual power. What would be the power of the radiator you want to have that would be stable that would compensate for the losses. Well, that would be this number divided by the 510 minutes, but converted in hours, right? So you want kilowatt hours per hour divided by the hours, right? So that's now kilowatt per degrees. And that's 0 0.674 divide 510 minutes, but expressed in hours. And we are going to be expressing this in watts rather than Q. 
kilowatt and that's about 79 watt and now that is our answer we have a room that consumes about 79 watts for each and every degrees of temperature that we are trying to maintain as a difference with the external temperature so the more there is a difference with the outside temperature the more it's going to cost in energy right so now let's look at an example if we want to maintain a difference of 13 degrees celsius with the outside temperature we're going to do 13 times 80 so it's about one kilowatt of power so that means you're going to be consuming for each hour let's say you want to sleep through the night 10 hours and that's aside from the fact you're going to have to heat up the room first you're going to be consuming one kilowatt constantly or one kilowatt hours per hour so by the end of the morning after 10 hours you will have consumed 10 kilowatt hours which let's say some are costing you know a bit more others a bit less but let's say it's 35p so it's going to cost you 3.5 pounds for the night to have maintained the temperature right so is that a lot yeah, I think it's a lot. I think what we've just uh, concluded is it's not a really good idea to use this shed for the night because it consumes just disproportionate amount of energy to make sure that it remains reasonably warm during the night when the nights remain quite cold. Now, this is quite different if you were to do that maybe in the spring. If you had 12 degrees Celsius outside, that would be a completely different ball game. Essentially, you would nearly have the amount of energy that you need to maintain a decent temperature in the room. So I hope that was useful. Please let me know in the comments if that makes sense or if you have any questions, whether you use any of those calculations. These are not very complicated calculations and I think they're quite helpful in understanding when you make a change, let's say changing windows, or changing something else, more insulation, whether you have made a difference in terms of how much energy you use versus not. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.